Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our office hours for the DBT Roxanne Adapter. Uh, my name is Justin, um, and uh, today we will be going through uh, our DBT Adapter with you guys. So um, I have Sam here with me, who is our lead engineer working on this. Uh, he'll be presenting the section a little bit later. I can give you, also give you guys a quick demo um, on what this, how this all works. Um, so here's what we're covering today. Um, we're going to first, you know, give a quick intro to to DBT and Rockset. Um, I know, you know, some of you are experienced with DBT, others are experienced with Rockset. Maybe you're experienced with neither. Um, so we're sort of, you know, to get everyone on the same page, introduce both, uh, share some use cases, uh, you know, talk about the adapter, demo it, um, and then we'll have at the very end a live Q and A. Cool. So to get us started here, uh, first let's talk about what is DBT. So DBT uh, it stands for Data Build Tool. Um, it is a very popular open source tool. Um, it's used primarily for data transformations. Um, and really what it's uh, known for is, you know, bringing a lot of really great software engineering practices to data engineering teams. Um, and you can see how we've written it, you know, helps you deploy your analytics code and ship them, uh, you know, a lot faster and, you know, with, with good practices. Um, so how does it actually do this? Um, you know, it, it basically just brings in a lot of these best practices. So, uh, you know, it lets you use uh, transform data using SQL statements. It builds um, directed acyclic graphs. Um, using data dictionaries, uh, you know, like the software engineering practices that, uh, I mentioned earlier, lets you do version control, CI/CD, um, testing, documenting, and automated deployments, um, all of which are, you know, completely new to the data engineering world um, and, and really make it a lot easier for you to work with data transformations. Um, so how does it actually do this? Uh, basically, DBT, again, let's say it's an open source tool, um, and it works on top of an external source. Um, and so, you know, today we're obviously going to talk about how to use DBT on top of Rockset, but traditionally, you know, uh, DBT is used on top of query engines um, and data warehouses like, you know, Snowflake, um, you know, Redshift, Databricks, uh, things like that. Uh, and how it really works is uh, you load your, you know, external data into one of these sources. Um, and then from there, you basically use SQL select statements to create what are called models in DBT. And models, you know, they can be materialized in a number of different ways, you know, for example, as, as views or, or tables in the underlying uh, you know, source, but uh, really all it is, is you can think of it as you have one transformation, uh, you select, you know, from your, do some kind of aggregation or in, in SQL or, or, or uh, joins on your source data to create a, a transfer, a transform view of that data, uh, which is your first model. And then you might do a second one, create a second model that references the first one, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, you know, we've shown, you know, an example here with models A, B, and C, but, you know, in, you know, a lot of companies, this can go on for hundreds or even thousands of models. And what's really nice about this is, you know, anyone can write the code. Uh, for these transformations. And, you know, when you write about, you know, the code for your model, you don't really have to worry about anyone else's. And, you know, they also let you, you know, test and deploy all of it individually per model, um, which is, you know, why people love DBT so much. So next we're going to get into what is Rockset. Um, so Rockset, you know, at a bird's eye view high level, uh, you know, we're a database. We are a database. Uh, we call ourselves a real-time analytics database. And what this really means is uh, we are able to execute queries faster uh, on more data and at scale. Um, and so Rockset is, is, is really, really good for, for you know, specific use cases that where you need to execute often really complex queries, uh, you know, some kind of analytical queries uh, that can you know, otherwise take a lot of expensive resources and return really, really slow on your primary database. And you basically would make a copy of that data inside Rockset and use it as your secondary index because we can serve that, you know, queries, those queries a lot faster without impacting the performance of your primary database. Um, and so how do we actually do this? Um, so which we'll get into today. Uh, so the first uh, way that we are most known for doing this is what we call uh, Rockset's Converge Index. Um, and so what really happens here is when your data comes into Rockset, we automatically index it in at least three different ways. Um, and we create a lot of these indexes automatically on your data. And what this really means at the end of the day is um, the impact here is, is just that you get faster query performance. Um, so the queries that you execute will return in faster time. And on top of that, um, you know, any of you who have spent time, you know, actually configuring um, and defining indexes for your database know that, you know, that's obviously a, a huge tedious process. And we basically do all of that for you. So regardless of the shape and size of your data coming in, we automatically index it for you. You never, you know, have the opportunity to even define your own indexes because we've done it all for you. And queries, you know, regardless of the, the type of data coming in are automatically fast inside of Rockset. Cool. Um, another really cool thing about Rockset, uh, you know, we are totally cloud native. Uh, we're totally in the cloud. Um, and what's also really unique about our architecture is it's completely disaggregated uh, between our reads and our writes. Um, and you can just quickly see a, a diagram here of, of what data might look like um, as it you know lives through its lifecycle in Rockset. Um, you know you have your own source database. It could be anything. You know we connect with 
databases, you know, like from, you know, MySQL, Postgres, or, or, or Dynamo, or Mongo, you know, they have data streams, uh, like Kafka or Kinesis, data lakes, like S3 or GCS, regardless of what the data source is, and you connect as many of them as you'd like, um, all of them come in um, to uh, our tailors, uh, which in, in Rockset are, are basically our, our machines that basically, you know, this is what Sam works on to actually ingest that data and index it um, inside your leaf nodes. And this all happens at the right time. Um, and on the flip side, on the read side, um, we have what are called our aggregators, which is, you know, as your queries are executing, we have a bunch of machines that spin up to try and, you know, make your queries go really, really fast and do all the calculations that you guys are trying to do on the fly. Um, in the end, obviously you get aggregated and aggregated and eventually serve your application. Um, and what's really nice about this architecture is, um, you know, you can basically scale your, your writes and your reads separately, um, exactly for what your needs are. Um, you know, one of the like biggest aha moments that we have with Roxa customers here is, you know, as you scale your um, reads here, for instance, you can see on this high concurrency side, um, if you, you know, provision twice the number of machines or, you know, 4x the number of machines, um, the, query, the queries quite literally get 2x or 4x faster, um, which is really, really awesome because you can basically, you know, customize to your application needs, um, whatever cost you'd like, uh, you know, to really optimize exactly for the, the you know, scale and, and speed of writes and reads that you need for your application requirements. Um, and finally here, we just have a couple examples um, of, you know, some of our own customers today that, that use Rockset for real-time analytics. You know, obviously a huge wide variety of use cases here. Um, you'll notice a lot of these use cases are, are basically, you know, we need some kind of complex queries at scale. Uh, you know, we need it in real time. So you need it really, really fast. You can't afford to wait, uh, you know, a while to make it happen. So, you know, this could be, you know, could be keeping our, our con concrete logistics tickets happening in real time, personalizing, you know, in e-commerce, uh, you know, which you might see like a, a like a, which, what else you might be interested in type of personalization package on, um, on Amazon type stuff, um, which you can do all over, or you can do real-time leaderboards on, on, on gaming, um, you know, real-time investment opportunities, um, you know, things like that are all really, really good use cases on Rockset. Cool, cool. And I'll pass it over back to Sam. Yeah, thanks, Justin, that was awesome. Uh, cool to hear more about Rockset. Uh, so yeah, for anyone who missed uh, the, the very beginning, just to reintroduce, I'm, I'm Sam, I work on the, the platform engineering team here at Rockset and I've been, um, leading up from an engineering side, our, our development of the dbt Rockset adapter, which is um, the adapter so that you can use dbt core on top of our database. So kind of putting it all together. So looking at uh, this diagram, it looks very similar to, to one that Justin showed. Um, and that kind of shows the simplicity of using dbt in my mind is, is that Rockset um, is this cloud native real-time indexing engine and a database on top of which you can build applications and user facing things. Um, and dbt core kind of just plugs into the database itself and allows for transformations within the database, um, which is really nice because Rockset is, is general purpose and, and very useful for real-time ad hoc querying. Uh, so if you plug dbt core into our, our core indexing engine, then you can transform your data within, within Rockset um, and, and tailor data to fit your application needs even better. So, so when one might use dbt and Rockset together, two, two core use cases, um, for Rockset as a product and, and dbt even uh, more easily and better enables those use cases. So data applications, any, any end user facing application um, that tries to surface insights um, using analysis of, of large scale data. So um, a lot of data that, that can be ingested into our products, dbt makes it even easier on Rockset to build these data applications and serve that uh, in a queryable format to users. And then operational analytics as well. We have, like Justin pointed out on that one slide, for example, one customer that um, Kind of runs this this big exchange of concrete all over uh, the U.S. and internationally, from what I understand, and uh, they use Rockset uh, very very heavily to uh, improve on their operations and, and improve efficiency even even further. So the the transformations that DBT allows for um, in DBT Core, the open source project, there are four core types of materializations. First, you have the view, um, which is kind of a general database concept to have a view on top of uh, an existing table or existing data. Uh, so when you materialize as a view in dbt, that maps to a view in Rockset. We have views in our product as a first-class citizen, so that's a pretty clean and, and a simple one-to-one -one mapping there. Uh, table materializations in, in dbt uh, become collections in Rockset. That's kind of just what we, what we call it internally. Our uh, tables, if you will, are, are called collections in Rockset. Incremental is um, kind of iteration on, on a table, if you will, or on a Rockset collection. It's the first time that you run the dbt model, like Justin explains, dbt models are kind of this uh, sequence of select statements. The first time you run it, it creates a new table in Rockset and it inserts all data into that table. Uh, and then any subsequent run after that, it would only incrementally select new data and append to 
um, append to the collection that was pre-created, and that, that depends on how you structure your query exactly. And then finally, ephemeral materializations, uh, the fourth materialization type in DBT. Um, this one is intuitively ephemeral in nature in that it doesn't actually result in data being written or materialized uh, within the database on top of which DBT is running. Uh, but instead, it, it just creates kind of a common table or expression or a, a subquery to use within subsequent queries that can select from this downstream. Cool. So that's that's what DBT looks like. Um, and then ways that can be used specifically on Rockset. And what I'll show today, the first demo will be um, streaming ELT using Rockset views. So you can load data from an external source into Rockset, uh, create, for example, view A, view B, and view C. And each of those uh, downstream views are the result of querying from upstream views. So I'll show one uh, kind of simple example of that. And then the second thing is incremental ELT using Rockset collections and the, the incremental DBT materialization type. Uh, so again, you'd load data from an external source uh, as you always would when, when using Rockset. Um, you create collection A on top uh, in Rockset. And then from that collection, you can create a new collection uh, by querying with a select statement. And the, the 2x, 3x, 4x, et cetera, is just trying to represent uh, subsequent times that you run the DBT model, the query just um, can run up to, you know, in theory, in infinite times and continue to append data to the existing collection. Cool. So I'll hop out of this mode right now just for a, a brief live demo of what we're talking about. Uh, let's see, let me grab my window up here. And, and of course, like Julie mentioned in the chat, any questions that one might have, uh, feel free to ask those now or as I go along with this. So uh, DBT is already set up in my environment. You can see that if I, for example, do a pip freeze and search for DBT, uh, I have DBT cores installed here, adapters for other types of databases, and then you can see DBT rocks that is installed in my environment on version 0 0.1.1, uh, which is the currently publicly released version of our DBT adapter. Um, another thing to kind of show with how one would think about using DBT um, with rocks is if I cat out my profile file, though I'm going to hide my API key, this is how one might um, structure rocks that profiles and DBT are very simple. All that you have to do is say, I want to connect to a rocks that database. Um, choose an arbitrary name for a workspace. A workspace is, is a way of just uh, organizing collections and other entities in Rockset. And then I've removed my API key, but that lives in the profile file as well. So you can imagine another line here with my long string API key that is in essence my password to, to Rockset and to my account. Um, so I'm going to kick off a DBT run here. This first demo project has a couple of views. And then the second project, I'll show what these models look like in a second, but I'll kick off a run here as well. Um, this first project found two models and the second should only find one. So I'll hop over to what those models actually look like. So in Rockset, we, uh, uh, one example use case uh, that we have set up is streaming live tweets from an AWS Kinesis stream into our product. Uh, and so this is selecting uh, a few fields from that live stream of tweets. Uh, you can see it, it's this, this collection called Twitter producer Kinesis. Um, and it's selecting based on certain criteria. So this is model A in the, in the views project. And then this model B, you can see uh, uses the very common DBT reference function um, select from ref live tweet. So view B selecting from view A, which is right here. Um, and it's doing kind of a kind of a group by based on the ticker symbol. The tweets that we're specifically uh, pulling from Twitter here are um, about stock ticker tweets. And then the second project is very similar. It's just instead of materializing as a view, which you see here, it's materializing as an incremental table. So this will result in, as a, in a table in Rockset. Um, the way that you can set these up is if if uh, DBT knows that this is an incremental run, if it is, then we will only want to select uh, data that has been written to the Kinesis stream in the last hour. So you can imagine kind of a setup where you'd run this say hourly, or if you wanted it to be daily or whatnot, you can stream uh, via incremental uh, in that way. So hopping back over then to the projects that I've run. So the incremental table, you can see it completed successfully finished by running one incremental model uh, resulting in a collection called demo workspace dot Twitter table incremental. And the views ran as well uh, and created two views, uh, one called live tweets and then one called live tweets by symbol. So uh, probably more useful to contextualize this a little bit better. If I go into the Rockset console, um, there's a lot going on in this account, a lot of different um, collections that we store and show, show to customers. But uh, in the workspace that we're talking about, it's the demo workspace. Uh, if I go to collections first, let me hop over there. And look for the demo workspace. Uh, Twitter producer Kinesis, this is an Amazon Kinesis collection that is kind of the upstream data source here. 
You can see Twitter table incremental was created and it already has about 5,000 records. And then back where we were with the, the views, um, you can see that live tweets was created and it's, it's, it selects from Twitter producer Kinesis, that upstream table, and then live tweets by symbol selects from um, the live tweets right below it here. So then going into the query editor to actually look at some data. Um, first, this is selecting from the incremental table I just created. So you can kind of see um, this, this is a live stream of tweets coming into Rockset. And then with the views, this ends up being a pretty similar data format. Um, you can see when it's run, it's actually updating. The, the data is changing each time it's run uh, with different tweets and ticker symbols. And then, like I mentioned, we uh, created the second view based on this first view called live tweets by symbol. Um, so the data just updated there. Now Tesla is leading the way. Doge closely behind, but Tesla's up to 328 uh, tweets um, since I, I last set this up, which was just a few minutes before the meeting. Cool. So that was the demo side of things. Uh, if there are any questions there, we're happy to like kind of pause, um, slow down a little bit and answer any of them. Otherwise, we have um, some questions that have been chatted to us and we're about at the end. So we'll uh, get to those in a minute. Cool. Okay, then just um, continuing on very, very briefly before we go to the question. So how one might get started with using DBT and Rockset. So you can always start a, a free trial of Rockset. And, and when you do so, we offer $300 in credits um, for any user. And then you can access the DBT Rockset adapter. And this is the, the GitHub source code. And then like other DBT adapters or uh, other open source Python projects, it it can be installed via via pip with pip install dbt rockset uh, and then from there you're off in the running um, getting started with transforming real-time data cool so that was that was what we ha had planned for um presenting today i don't know if julie if you uh were able to collect any any questions in the meantime yeah i can ask a, a couple of questions to you sam um so the first one is um, how do you think that Rockset differs from something like a data warehouse, like BigQuery, um, Snowflake, or Redshift? Cool. Yeah, good, good question. One that we definitely get very commonly. I mean, they are built for very different purposes. The way that we often explain it, um, Snowflake, for example, is the cloud native data warehouse. So it's, it's really useful for serving up historical data. So organizations that say they have, you know, 30 years of data, and we're talking many, many petabytes of data, even they they um, can store it all in their warehouse, uh, build and develop ad hoc queries, and then serve that to, uh, for example, internal analysts. Uh, so it's kind of offline analytics being performed there. Rockset is architected in a very similar way, architected very much for the, for the cloud era, um, architected in a disaggregated way in order to be scalable for uh, large data sizes, but it, it's more tailored directly towards um, real-time data, real-time transformations, uh, active data ingest. So instead of serving for example, offline reporting and analytics, you might serve real-time applications that, that actual users use on top of our product. And you spoke a lot about kind of uh, real-time transformations and also a little bit kind of around real-time analytics. What are, do you see as kind of the latency that's involved with, with real-time analytics? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, and something that probably would have been useful to dive into a little bit more in detail in the presentation, but. Um, kind of like Justin mentioned, the, the ingest path and the query path are completely disaggregated from each other, and the ingest actually is asynchronous in nature with respect to the, the querying. Um, but in terms of latency specifically, like uh, we, we serve sub-second queries on, you know, terabytes of data. Um, that's a, a very common way to use Rockset is, it, I mean, in order to build, you know, a snappy um, user-facing application, it's important. If you're, if you're loading a dashboard for a user, it has to load, you know, within a second, probably at, at the most. So we serve sub-second queries on, on top of a lot of data. And then ingest-wise, um, it'll depend on, you know, the source from which it's being ingested and the, and the volume of, of ingest. But it's very common that we can ingest data, um, you know, within 5, 10, up to 30 seconds or so. Um, for example, that, that Twitter stream, uh, given that it's not actually an overwhelming amount of, of tweets coming from uh, these specific top stock ticker symbols, we can stay pretty up to date with that within a, within a few seconds. And then you talked through the four materialization strategies and you also walked us through views and incremental. When should someone use a view versus an incremental materialization strategy? How should they think about that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question as well. Um, 
the way that I would think about that is, is it depends on exactly what you're optimizing for. Um, views in terms of an entity being created in the database, they're pretty lightweight, not just for us, but for other types of databases as well. If you're optimizing for um, like the real time nature of the ingest, uh, then views are a great way to go because you simply ingest into like an up, a single upstream source collection of the views, just create kind of a, um, a, a way of querying that data. It's just kind of a, a query that exists in the product predefined. Um, and then I might use the incremental uh, materialization, for example, if you're optimizing for the end query and a little bit less for the real time ingest, because if you're incrementally um, selecting new data via DBT run, you're probably sacrificing a bit of that um, low latency ingest, but because you're materializing data further downstream, closer to the end user, then the query is going to be faster. Yeah, to add a little bit to that, like if you can keep in mind, like if you are using only views and you're stringing all your views together, what's really nice is you only need to do like set up DBT and set up your transformations one time. And you can sort of just like call that like the, the final view that you're looking for. Um, and it will basically, you know, it does all the work during read time, like all the aggregations. And so, you know, if you can get away with that, um, that's obviously the, the ideal world here. You know, every single time you call that query, it'll always be with up-to-date data. You never have to like spend, you know, any extra time or, or any extra DBT commands to update your death transformations. Um, whereas, you know, if you're using incremental or, or, or table or any of the other, you know, um, materializations um, that actually persist the data, then you have to, you know, at least run DBT run, um, you know, in batch. To, to keep your data updated regularly. We also had a question come in around when you would use Rackset versus um, just MySQL. Justin, I know you also worked on, on an adapter, um, I, I'm sorry, on, on bringing in MySQL and Postgres to Rackset as an integration. Do you wanna to speak to a little bit about the differences between those two? Yeah, um, so basically like, uh, it's a great question. So I mean, like it, this could be a question you can ask about you know, a number of source databases, uh, like when you would even like think about using Rockset when, uh, you know, your query is already running on top of, you know, MySQL, Postgres or, or Dynamo. Um, you know, there's a couple of different indicators for that. Um, you know, the, the first most of which is uh, your queries become slower um, is, is really what it comes down to. Like as your, your, your data size scales, as your, you know, your user base grows, the complexity of your queries might also grow. Um, you know, what the queries that you might have been running before that were finishing, you know, in millisecond time are now taking, you know, seconds, you know, to finish. Um, and, you know, you need some kind of uh, alternative to run those queries faster. That's one reason you might come to Rockset. Um, and yeah, like another reason for that is, you know, it's possible for a lot of times, you know, as also your, your data and query size grow, that you don't want to run these kind of same complex queries on your source database. Um, you know, you wouldn't want, you know, you, let's say you're running like personalized recommendations in e-commerce or something. Those are really, really complex queries, but those are, you know, obviously not critical to your user workflow. Um, and so, you know, you wouldn't want like those queries being overly complex or, or being too expensive to, you know, clog up the important, you know, transactional queries that you're trying to do, like, you know, saving data or, or just getting data. Um, and so that's when you would, you know, use Rockset. Rockset basically, you know, obviously copies all of your data into the Rockset indexes. Um, and rerun those queries here. And so, you know, no matter how these queries perform, it'll never you know, sort of clog up your, your source database. Great, and we also had a question around if the demo notebook will be shared after the session. I, could, I guess I could speak to that briefly. Um, uh, Julie and Justin could overrule me if you have done this before. I'm not aware that we've uh, shared it directly, but we, we likely have either a direct guide that would show on how to set up that specific Twitter stream or just our documentation generally on setting up a Kinesis stream, I would probably be useful in showing someone how to set up that kind of a Kinesis stream using Twitter. And then from there, getting into Rockset is, is uh, relatively simple. So we could share, we'd be happy to share like our, our Kinesis uh, documentation with you. Yeah, we can reach out afterwards. I think the Twitter stream is, is a public Amazon stream, right? I, I'm not positive I'm not on that sure one. About, not, yeah. not the one that we use specifically. They might have something similar, but. Okay. I also have I also have some code samples on getting a Twitter stream using, I think it's TweetP, like one of the Python libraries. It's a listener. Um, I can possibly share some examples of how you can get Twitter data and then push it to Rockset or push it to a transactional database and then, or a NoSQL database and then send it to Rockset too, or to a stream or whatever. That'd be awesome. Um, we can follow up um, after this chat. Thanks, Nadine, for the help. Cool. And then the last thing is, um, is this only with DBT Core or is this also support with DBT Cloud today? Yeah, so um, in our, our launch as of 
uh, mid last week. This is we're just supporting DBT core um, and continuing to work with the DBT labs team, uh, you know, soon enough or eventually one day to be supported on in DBT cloud. Um, first, just kind of getting initial feedback on the adapter and the value it can provide to customers. Awesome. Great. Well, that's it for today. Um, we are um, giving away free t-shirts, Data is My Rock. Um, I did post the link to just kind of fill out the form so we can get your address and your size and ship that over to you in the United States. Um, thank you all for joining and we'll follow up kind of with the recording of this um, and some of the other content that we've produced around this release. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Yeah, thank you.